Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Home Makes. I'm your girl Momo. I do DIYs, upcycles and sewing projects. Today we're going to be making a fuzzy potato robe. We have a tradition in our family every year. We make a fuzzy robe for my son that he wears around the house. By a very lucky chance, this year he accompanied me to Joanne's and he picked out this amazing, really fun potato fabric. 100% cotton. We also picked out some fleece material, which is in burgundy color, and decided to make a robe with it. So hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and let's get started on the robe. For this robe, I'm using this potato print fabric as the main outer shell. The burgundy plush fleece is the lining and for the accents, I'm going to be using this beige polar fleece. The pattern I'm using for this project is the free kimono pattern I released for my summer kimono video. It is a free pattern and you can download it from my Google Drive by clicking on the link below. You will get a PDF file which is a password protected file and the password you can find by watching the entirety of this video. I will make sure that it pops up for you so you can screenshot it and insert it into your PDF file to open it and print it on a large scale paper. Please make sure you don't skip any step in this video. For this project, I'm going to modify the pattern to make it larger. This video will serve you as a basic guide for the kimono pattern adjustment. For reference, my son is 5'7 and has really broad shoulders. He wears a size large hoodie and I'm going to be using one of his hoodies to figure out the adjustment needed for the pad. We are starting our adjustment with the back piece first. For this, I am measuring the hoodie across the shoulders. I am then going to fold my fabric and mark the maximum width of the shoulder on the fabric. I am going to place the pattern offsetting to the maximum width like so and this would give me the extra width I need for the adjustment along the center line of the folded fabric. I'm going to mark the outline for the armholes and the length needed for the row. To adjust the front, I'm going to lay the back piece on the fold and mark the width needed. Then I'm going to place the pattern piece on the fabric and mark the armholes and the shape of the front belt. I'm also going to mark the position of the welt pockets which I realized later that I should have moved up close by the waistline but oh well lesson learned it turned out really too low on this fuzzy robe. For the welt pocket I'm going to mark a 7 inch long by 1 inch wide rectangle like so. The markings will be made on the right side of the fabric so remember that. For the accent on the welt pocket, I'm going to be using this steel scrap of fabric. 
I'm measuring about two inches wider than the belt pocket rectangle and pinning it in place. Moving on to the sleeves, it's a simple fold and cut. I extended the sleeves by a couple inches to allow for a roomier fit. If you are adapting the kimono pattern for an L or an XL size, you will extend the sleeves by two inches in width and about an inch in length. Since the armholes for this size is about 11 inches, I had to add a strip of fabric to the length of the sleeves to make it wider. Once the two pieces are joined together, I place the sleeve pattern to cut out the shape of the sleeve gap. Yeah. The sleeve cuffs will be finished with the teddy bear fleece. I'm roughly cutting about four inch wide strips, which will be attached to the end of the sleeves right here. And I am measuring and cutting them to match the opening of the sleeve cuffs. Since this is a potato roll, I'm going to put a large letter P on the back as the accent it represents the potato king. I'm going to cut out the shape, the letter P with the teddy bear please. I'm going to pin the letter in place onto the middle of the back piece. I also plan to add about four inches of the teddy bear fleece at the bottom hem of the rope. So I cut out strips and mashed them to the front pieces and pinned in place for now. And repeated the same process for the back piece. These will be sewn to the outer shell and will be visible on the robe as the bottom piece edge. The lapel of the kimono will be finished in the teddy bear fleece material so you will have a nice fuzzy band of fleece right in the front. So I cut a really long strip of fleece about six inches wide which will be folded over and attached right here. Um, this is uh, roughly the size uh, of the kimono multiplied by two for both the sides and uh, about eight inches extended towards the back of the rope. Once we get to the finishing stage, we'll figure out the exact length. Right now, we're just making a really long strip. For the lining, we need the exact same size pieces as the outer shell, so I'm going to use the front pieces as my guide to cut out the front lining piece. Line it up nicely with the lining fabric on the fold and cut out two front pieces. Since the burgundy plush fabric was such a nightmare to deal with, I pinned all the layers before cutting so I would get uniform pieces. Similarly, I cut out the back lining piece, but for this, I did not have enough fabric to cut on the fold. So instead, I cut out one back piece and then used that as the guide to cut out another facing piece. 
these will be joined in the middle to form the whole back piece. Next on to the sleeves, unfortunately I did not have enough fabric for the sleeve lining. At the time when I was picking up this fabric, I had not thought of making uh, the rope. This uh, burgundy fleece fabric was actually a uh, end of the world piece that I had purchased and decided to include into this project. Therefore, uh, the material was a little short. I had two years of the burgundy fleece, but I needed maybe six more inches to make this leaf perfectly. So close, so close. Anyway, time to improvise, adapt, and overcome. I'm going to join a few pieces of fabric to first make a long piece and then cut out the sleeve from it. When I laid out the sleeve pieces, I realized that I was still a couple inches short. At this point, I was all out of options. So I didn't have any teddy bear fleece scraps. I didn't have any burgundy fleece scraps, but I had a bit of white fleece lying around and that was my only choice. I cut up two strips of three inches width, which I will insert in the center of the sleeve. It's going to be on the inside. So it's going to not only add some uh, warmth down the length of the sleeve, but also will be a hidden inside accent. Once I sewed that in place, I had lining pieces large enough to finally cut the sleeve out of. Oh boy, that was quite a challenge. One eternity later. It is time to start sewing. I'm starting with the front piece. I'm going to sew the hem piece on first and then work on the belt pockets. The belt pockets are slit pockets with a bound pocket opening. The pocket bag is on the inside of the garment and to the front you can only see two strips uh, which are sewn adjacent to each other and they are turned inwards to form the outline of the slit pocket hence the name double welt pocket. I've done a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to sew double welt pockets in this video right here so if you want to see all the steps and follow along you can watch that video next. Let's focus on the potato robe in this video and I'm going to speed through the welt pocket construction for now. To make the welt pocket, uh, I'm going to first mark the outline of the welt pocket. I'm going to place the two welts on the uh, or the outlining strips on the top of the rectangle with the folded edges meeting in the middle and I'm going to mark the rectangle on top of the strips. I'm going to pin these in place and then sew the long sides of the rectangles for now. I'm going to cut out the main fabric along the center line to form the slit of the pocket like so and I'm going to push the weld strips through this opening towards the back. Here I'm going to flip them over and sew the right triangle pieces of the opening to the strips with vertical strip stitches um, which now will close the rectangle. I'm taking the two pocket pieces and with the right fabric side facing inside I'm going to stitch the bottom piece with the bottom edge of the welt and then I'm going to sew the top piece to the top welt. As a final step, I'm going to align the pocket pieces and stitch around closing the pocket bag. Give it a good press and the double welt pocket is done.
done. With this, the front pieces are ready. I'm now going to finish the decoration on the back. I've cut out a big letter P which stands for Potato King of course and just the teddy bear fleece didn't feel like a standout on the busy print of the outer shell so I decided to introduce some color. I had this piece of red velvet lying around and I thought it would add a lovely pop of color. I'm going to spray the letter cut out with a quilt basting spray and stick it to the velvet layer. I am then going to cut out the velvet in the shape of the letter P. I am going to spray the entire back side of the letter uh, with the basting spray again and stick it right here in the, the middle of the back piece. I'm going to zigzag decorative stitch to permanently sew the letter onto the back side and I'm going to outline the velvet as well as the fleece letter with the zigzag stitch. With the decoration complete, I am going to join the front pieces to the back piece along the shoulders. I am then going to lay the pieces flat and pin the sleeves to the curve of the armhole. So the sleeves onto the main body and we are ready to close the sides of the robe. I'm going to start sewing from the bottom up to the armpit and then down the sleeves and sew until the sides are closed and repeat the same process on the other side, completing the outer shell structure of the row. Next, I'm going to assemble the lining piece. I'm going to sew the two back pieces together and then I'm going to line up the front pieces to the back piece and sew them at the shoulder seam. This is the standard construction method of any clothing. I am then going to lay the pieces flat and pin the sleeve pieces to the curve of the armhole. Sew the sleeves onto the lining body and we are ready to close the sides. With the lining and the outer shell completed, I am now going to lay them on top of each other, line them up nicely and get ready to sew the robe completely closed. The front lapel strip of the robe is going to be sandwiched between the uh, inner layer and the outer shell so that once you close the front seam and flip it out, it is going to form a very neat edge sewn together. Sew the bottom hem and the front all the way down and then turn the rope inside out and pull the sleeves through. The sleeves will be sewn together as a last step. And I'm going to add a 3 inch accent strip in teal to bind and finish the hem on the sleeves. I'm going to place the teal strip on the inside, stitch it, flip it over and do a top stitch to do the finishing. And 
with that, the potato roll for the potato king is now complete. He can put it in it all day long. Do make it for the potato in your life and tag me so I can see your take on the potato roll. My hashtag is Bakes. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I post videos pretty much every week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, I have a very strong feeling that you're going to like this one. This is the wet pocket tutorial, so please make sure that you check that one out.